Suddenly, out of this, the universe expands. On the quest to better mankind, it's in our nature to be curious and test the limits. Sometimes we hit our target, and usually we fail, but sometimes we win in our failure. In this video, you will see the most amazing accidental discoveries in history. Now is the time to like the video, share, subscribe, and ring the notification bell. Number 10, Viagra. It started life as UK 92480. Men probably don't want this mentioned, but it is estimated that roughly 30 million men in the US and over 100 million men worldwide suffer from ED. And studies indicate that about 50% of men aged 40 to 70 experience some degree of ED. So this blue pill is in some ways a lifesaver. Or giver. You be the judge. The point is, it wasn't originally made for its current purpose. The pharmaceutical company Pfizer developed a pill named UK92480 to help constrict arteries to relieve pain. The pill failed its primary purpose, but the secondary side effect was uplifting. And the drug, well, it became known as Viagra. Number 9. Penicillin A miracle out of mold. That same green mold which everyone has seen growing in bread or ruining fruit and vegetables. Forever enshrined in scientific legend is the discovery of penicillin. Sir Alexander Fleming, a Scottish researcher who is often described as a reckless lab technician, was experimenting with the influenza virus in the laboratory of St. Mary's Hospital in London. After being gone on vacation for two weeks, Fleming returned to find that mold had developed on an accidentally contaminated staff culture plate. Upon his examination of the mold, he realized that the culture prevented the growth of staph. And this discovery opened up the door to a group of antibiotics that are used to combat a variety of bacterial infections. Since then, modern medicine was never the same, and human lives were in less danger of being ended by a deep wound. Number 8. The Microwave The microwave proved to be the most time-saving and convenient device to enter the kitchen. It was the vacuum tube radio transmitter that gave way to the first components used to create the microwave oven in the 1920s. And by the 1930s, short waves were already being applied in some medical therapy procedures. So imagine the excitement for the people in 1933 at the Chicago World's Fair to see the first demonstration of a microwave. But don't imagine it was as modern as it is today. The first microwaves were heavy and hulkish. But the one that people witnessed at the 1933 World Fair in Chicago only consisted of two metal plates attached to shortwave transmitters. It did, however, cook those steaks and mashed potatoes in just a few minutes. But it was Percy Spencer who finally fine-tuned the microwave into what we know today. Spencer was an American engineer who walked in front of a vacuum tube and noticed that the chocolate bar in his pocket had melted. So in 1945, after a few more experiments of exploding eggs and the like, Spencer successfully invented the first microwave oven. Number 7. Velcro That's all the little tiny hooks. A whole bunch of little pieces of plastic shaped just like this. Remember in the Men in Black movie when Agent K alluded that Velcro was invented by aliens? Could that possibly be true? <laughs> no, of course not. But Velcro surely was a futuristic invention for its time, and we still use it on a daily basis. Actually, what made Velcro so popular was NASA. This agency used it for their flight suits to secure items in zero gravity in the 1960s. And no, they did not get it from the aliens. The beginning of Velcro goes back to 1941 in Switzerland, and it all started with an engineer named George de Mastral and his trusty sidekick, his dog. While hiking, he noticed that burrs were clinging to his pants and the fur of his trusted mate. Upon further inspection, he realized the burrs hooks would easily cling to any fabric or hairs with a loop shape. His engineer mind began to ponder, and he decided to mimic this occurrence. He mixed velvet and crochet together, and that was the combination that currently gives us the word Velcro. Number 6. The Big Bang Theory Everything in the known universe compressed into a dot smaller than an atom. To quote Michael Fassbender, big things have small beginnings. Considering the Big Bang Theory, this is quite exceptional. 
But let's just hope that Jack Kornfield's famous quote, everything that has a beginning has an ending, isn't in the foreseeable future. When it comes to the Big Bang, the secret to discovering the prevailing theory as to how the universe was made actually began with sound. In 1964, while working with a Holmdel antenna in New Jersey, two astronomers discovered a background noise that left them perplexed. After ruling out possible interferences from urban areas, nuclear tests, or even pigeons living in the antenna, Wilson and Penzias came across an explanation that aligned with Robert Dick's theory. Dick proposed that radiation was left over from a universe-forming Big Bang and would now act as background cosmic radiation. As a matter of fact, just a mere 37 miles from the Holmdel antenna at Princeton University, Dick and his team had been searching for this background radiation, but unable to grasp it. When he heard the news of Wilson and Penzias' discovery, he famously told his research partners, well, boys, we've been scooped. And they were right, because Penzias and Wilson went on to win the Nobel Prize. Number 5. Teflon The most important properties of this substance discovered were that it was extremely slippery, one of the slipperiest substances known to man. Roy Plunkett was a scientist with DuPont in 1938. While there, he was vigorously working on methods to make refrigerators more home-friendly. He constantly searched for ways to replace the current refrigerant, which was primarily ammonia, sulfur dioxide, and propane. On one fine morning, after he opened the container on one particular sample he was developing, Plunkett found his experimental gas was gone. All that was left was a strange, slippery resin, and it turned out that this substance was resistant to extremely high temperatures and other chemicals. Teflon became the brand name of a chemical coating. Now, one interesting note is that before the 60s, when Teflon became most notably for nonstick cookware, it was used by the Manhattan Project, and a decade after that, it was used in the automotive industry. With all the heavy duty industries using Teflon, many people were only wise to have their reservations and refrain from using it until it was finally approved to be safe. Nowadays, all companies in the US that use Teflon meet requirements to be considered safe for cookingware. However, there are still some who simply prefer alternative like stainless steel, cast iron cookware, stoneware, ceramic cookware, and silicone cookware. Number 4. Vulcanized Rubber Rubber is one of the most underappreciated miracles of nature. In the 1830s, natural rubber was a popular substance for waterproof shoes and boots, but its inability to withstand freezing temperatures and extreme heat soon left consumers and manufacturers frustrated. That led some to say that rubber had no future, but Charles Goodyear disagreed. After years of trial and error trying to make rubber more durable, the scientist stumbled upon his greatest discovery by complete accident. In 1839, when showcasing his latest experiment, Goodyear accidentally dropped his rubber concoction on a hot stove. What he discovered was a charred, leather-like substance with an elastic rim. Rubber was now weatherproof, and this is exactly what vulcanization refers to. It is a wide range of processes to condition rubber, especially hardening rubbers. The term originally referred exclusively to the treatment of natural rubber with sulfur, which remains the most common practice. However, it has also grown to include the hardening of other rubbers via various means. And regarding Mr. Goodyear, he was never able to receive rewards for his discovery and actually died while being $200,000 in debt. And although his surname and legacy lives on, the Goodyear Tire and Rubber Company came about 40 years after his death. Number 3. Coca-Cola If you look carefully at the statements, as they say, Cocaine was never part of the formula for Coca-Cola. In this case of unintentionally creating a world-changing invention, the inventor of the Coca-Cola is the perfect case. John Pemberton surely wasn't a shrewd businessman, a seller of sweets, or a dreamer looking to strike it rich in the beverage business. Actually, John Pemberton just wanted to cure headaches. As a pharmacist by profession, Pemberton used two main ingredients in his hopeful headache cure. One ingredient you are aware of since we love to make jokes about it was cocoa leaves. And the other ingredient was cola nuts. And when his lab assistant accidentally mixed the two with carbonated water, the world's first Coke was realized. Of course, over the years, Coke would tinker with the secret recipe that still remains a myth to this day. Regarding Pemberton, he died just two years after, and sadly was never able to witness his simple mixture, giving Sprout into the soft drink empire that it is nowadays. 
Number two, radioactivity. Becquerel had discovered a new kind of radiation, but hardly any attention was paid to the uranium rays, as he called them. It's funny how dreadful situations can make breakthroughs in technology and wonderful turn of events in life. That's why we do say there is a silver lining around every cloud. In this case, bad weather was actually the spark of serendipity. In 1896, a French scientist by the name of Henri Becquerel was working on an experiment involving a uranium-enriched crystal. He hypothesized that sunlight was the reason that the crystal would burn its image onto a photographic plate. With dark clouds rolling in, the quarrel packed up his gear and thinking the day had been lost, decided to continue his research on another sunny day. A few days later, he retrieved the crystal from a darkened drawer, and to his surprise, the image had burned onto the plate. Although he described it as fog, the crystal admitted rays that fogged the plate but were dismissed as weaker rays compared to William Rotengen's X-ray. The quarrel wouldn't go on to put a name to the phenomenon, he left that for two fellow scientists. Pierre and Marie Curie. The Curies then received the Nobel Prize in Physics in 1903. Number 1. Smart Dust And if we bring them down to dust, we can get them to monitor environments, but we could also get them to collaborate to form maybe even solid objects. Jamie Link, at the age of 25, developed dust-sized chips of silicon that actually allowed scientists to rapidly and remotely detect a variety of biological and chemical agents. These agents include substances that even a terrorist might dissolve in drinking water or spray into the atmosphere. According to her university, the University of California, San Diego, she invented the tiny silicon chips, or smart dust, in the laboratory of her graduate advisor, Michael Saylor, professor of chemistry and biochemistry. For his contributions to the breakthrough, he received a $10,000 award. It goes to show that sometimes homework really does pay off even when it blows up in your face. The chemistry graduate, Jamie Link, was working on a silicon chip like any other regular day in the lab, when suddenly the chip shattered. With the help of her professor, she discovered that the tiny bits of the chip were still sending signals and actually operating as tiny sensors. They went on to coin the term smart dust for these small self-assembling particles. And this is our number one on the list because smart dust has a myriad of potential applications and plays a large role in attacking and destroying tumors. Which scientific breakthrough intrigues you the most? Leave your comments down in the comment section, like, subscribe, share, and ring the notification bell.